Okay, so this is the demonstration video for how to properly shade a sphere, a cone, and a cylinder. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to actually draw the sphere. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of make a little arc like this. And then you're going to turn your paper and continue making that same arc. And it gives you a pretty round circle to start with. So that's how the circle is going to look when we start out. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in something called a horizon line behind the circle too, to make it look like it's sitting on the surface. Then for the cone, we're going to start out with an oval, just like this. From there, we're going to make a triangle. Just like this. And we're going to take our eraser and we're going to erase the top part of that oval and that gives us a nice rounded cone on the bottom. Then the next one we're going to make is a cylinder. And we're going to start the cylinder by making an oval on top and an oval on the bottom. And then we're going to connect up the ends of those ovals and we're going to erase the bottom arc again so we have a nice rounded form. Now it's important that you make the ovals the same on top and bottom. And just like with the sphere, we're going to make a horizon line in the background. Now when we draw these all together, we're just going to have one horizon line on the three shapes, but I'll show you that later. So <clears throat> when you're shading these shapes, the three techniques are going to be three different ways of shading. Um, so I'm going to show you the circle first, and then we'll move on to these other two shapes. Uh, the first thing we want to do is figure out where our light source is hitting. Generally, we're going to make a little light line, and it's going to be hitting right about here. So you'll make like a little circle right there. Um, and then behind the shape, we'll create the cast shadow, which falls opposite, almost as if you kept drawing this line, you could keep drawing it right into the middle of the cast shadow. So it falls behind the form just like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start laying in the middle tone or middle value. And we're going to do that, and we want it to be about a 6 on the number scale. So on your value scale, your middle tone should be kind of a 6. And uh, we're wanting it to kind of look like a crescent moon at first and it's going to kind of flow around the shape and then come a little bit up here. Okay, so you can kind of make like a little guideline there so you don't go past it. And then you're just going to kind of fill it in. Just like so. And you can kind of change directions as you go around the shape. And you're going to come and reinforce that outer edge, just like that. Now we're going to take our little blending tool and we're going to blend in the shadow and we're going to kind of blend it out to the highlight area and that's where the light source is hitting. Before I get into any more detail here, I'm going to take my eraser and kind of get rid of the little dot that was my guideline there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around the circle and I'm going to fill in the core of the shadow. Now you don't want the core of the shadow to go too much close to the edge of the sphere because that's what's known as reflected light. We don't want the darkness to go all the way up to the edge. And the core of the shadow is going to kind of flow around the circle. And at first, the core of your shadow should be like around a number eight value. So fairly dark.
and you want it to look like, once again, like a, like a dark crescent moon. And as you get up to the other value, you're just going to relax on your pressure. And blend it into that other value that you already have laid in your mid-tone. And you can use the edge of your blending tool here to kind of blend it out a little bit more. You don't want to go too deep into your shadow, though, because you'll pull the material up off the surface, the graphite. Now I'm going to come and darken again, but this time I'm not going to darken as far. just in the core of the shadow where the darkness really lies. And once again, see the shadow is pointy on either end. Okay, so that's important. Once you get that laid in, what you're gonna do is with your cast shadow, we're gonna come and get really, really dark with that. Your cast shadow right near the form, so right here, should be a number 10 value. And then as we get further away, it's gonna blend to a number nine. So I'm darkening this to a 10, and then gradually blending it out to a 9. And we can use our blending tool to make those a little smoother. Don't go overboard with the blender, though. All right, so that's a sphere. Now, with a cone, we once again want to make sure we clock in our light source, and it's going to hit on this side. Okay, or if it were hitting on the other side, we would shadow from there. All right, so if it's coming from this side, once again, we're going to lay in a cast shadow that's opposite, and we're going to start by adding in our middle value. Now, if you guys look, the strokes with my pencils are kind of spoking out from the center. And I'm going to gradually get lighter as I go towards my light source. I'm going to use my blender tool to make that smoother. Once again, just like the sphere, I'm going to reinforce that outer edge. And I'm going to start by darkening along the side of the shape that's furthest away from the light source, making the core of the shadow right here, going up from the center, and then towards the edge of the shape, kind of spoking out. And then, I'm going to get gradually lighter as I move towards my light source. And I'm going to go ahead and darken this shadow too. And it's going to get gradually lighter as it goes away from the shape. Core of the shadows once again really, really dark as we go up towards the tip of the form. And it gets lighter as we move towards the light source. Now I'm going to come back in and do just a little bit of final blending. Okay, the cylinder actually works in a very similar manner. We have our light source hitting here. Now the thing about the cylinder is the light source is going to interact with this top part too. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in a blend that runs across the top part. And it's going to be darkest away from our light source and it's going to get lighter as we go towards the light source. Then, just like the other ones, I'm going to start by laying in the mid midtone or middle value. And I'm going to lay it in till about right there. We have our cast shadow coming down like this. The cast shadow is going to have a little rounded top to it. And looking at this, it's going to be darkest right here towards the core. And get a little bit lighter for that reflected light.
and gradually get lighter and blend it into that middle tone or middle value. Use my blender tool to make it a little bit smoother. Smoother transition to the white. And looking at that, it took a lot of the value off the surface, so I'm going to come back in and darken it using the side of my pencil, not so much the point. Once again, I'm laying in the cast shadow here. Coming back and darkening the core because I want the core of the shadow to be that rich black the number 10 value. I'm just going to go back and forth. I'm kind of going across the lines I've already made to smoothen them out a little bit. I'm gradually getting lighter as I go towards the light source, which is over there. And I'm going to come back and use a little bit of line to reinforce the edge of the form. That's the procedure.